My name's Kate Gallagher, and along with my colleague, Rebecca Ango, we are actually going to walk you through our interactive presentation today, highlighting some of Patient Advocate Foundation's social need navigation. So let me set the stage for this presentation. We know that patient experience is the crux of the work at Patient Advocate Foundation. With that in mind, I would like to start today's presentation with a quote that is reflective of the incredible work our team embarks on each and every day, how they search for solutions to make what seems an impossible situation possible, even when some of those solutions are only helpful for that single moment in time. I was at my wits end trying to figure out how to continue paying for transportation, grocery, and accumulated medical costs on my income. The foundation's assistance program, while not getting me completely out of debt, helped and is helping me great, greatly. Thank you. Thank you very much. So social determinants such as education, income, and community conditions, which are often tied to race and ethnicity, can play a significant role in why certain communities experience higher rates of disease, morbidity, and mortality. So each of these elements are interconnected, as we can see in the infographic, and can impact others. And this creates a larger environment that needs to be taken into consideration when working with patients to create optimal treatment decisions and plans. Although comprehensive in nature, social determinants of health are only part of the equation when discussing the larger context of patient-centered care. I really love that we have already been set up to think about how we're moving beyond this hashtag of social determinants of health, um, because really that is just one piece of the puzzle. Uh, we need to think about social determinants of health, but we also need to think about how these factors connect to the larger goal of health equity, as well as how we're helping individuals and communities in need now by addressing their social risk and their social needs. Um, at the same time, we're working to change the system. So that, that really is the model for achieving health equity. We promised an interactive uh, presentation. And so if the technology works, we um, are going to ask you to um, use the polling option that should pop up on your screen. Uh, to choose which of these factors are the most important for addressing health equity. All right, it should have just popped up for you um, and you have to choose one. So which of these factors um, is the most important for addressing health equity? It really showed that the most important factor um, that was chosen was addressing all bias, but with a close uh, second and third for accessible education and affordable housing. There really is no right answer to this question. We asked it to really get you thinking about um, kind of weighing these in your head mentally and, and exploring each one and, and really thinking about how they work together because um, really all of these determinants um, play together. You want to add anything, Kate? Well, it's just it's just it's interesting that all of those are are elements or things that that touch the bubbles in the social determinants of health graphic. But it it it, it is interesting that you know racism is not one that that appears, and we know that that is something that can be such a large underlying factor, especially how it was set up in in the in the opening comments it's it, it is there it's unfortunately uh, a foundation that has touched upon and and you know influenced each of those spheres yeah. as, as well as all bias right which was the number one response correct uh, so absolutely how this interplay um, touches all the social determinants of health but it is a much bigger conversation so we're gonna drill down a little bit. Again, moving beyond social determinants of health, that really is uh, social, economic, structural, um, but there are social risk factors that stem from the social determinants of health as well as social needs. And a person may have many social risk factors, but fewer immediate social needs, um, which is why engaging individuals in conversations 
um, about their unmet social needs is really crucial to identifying which need is the most pressing in that moment in time. And that is really at the heart of needs navigation. So this needs navigation and, and what we're gonna be talking about throughout um, today, as well as it, what is at the heart of um, PAF's direct services, uh, is this intervention of helping people with their social needs um, at a time of crisis or potentially um, intervening before it becomes a crisis while um, work is being done at a structural level to really start um, advancing health equity and addressing social determinants. But like we heard in an earlier um, session today, people need help now, and that's where this uh, needs navigation comes in. We want to really know what your experience is with social needs and navigation. Um, we'd love to know if you have helped somebody um, navigate resources, if somebody has helped you, um, if you've experienced hardships and didn't have somebody to find solutions, um, or if you did um, find solutions with the help of the navigators. So tell us a little bit about your experience. We'd love to hear um, from the audience um, what, what your experiences have been. We wanted this to be anonymous, but if anybody wants to drop in the chat some of their experiences, um, that, that may be a really great way for us to, to learn just a little bit about our audience. Um, I would imagine that the majority of um, individuals on this call fall into at least one of these categories, if not multiple. And often um, the, uh, the people that we serve at PAF are reflective of um, a larger population. Yeah, so we, we know that the need for navigation and, and help with social need is something that can be experienced by anyone. I was hoping to have some feedback from the previous poll to, to talk about, but we know here at PAF that our data is reflective of those who are in greatest need with a chronic illness who reach out to us. Um, all of the data that we are presenting in this particular presentation is based off of our 2020 annual impact report. And we know that our patients do represent a geographically diverse group of challenged and underserved populations. So patients come to PAF from many walks of life and even those who may not be considered as low resource may need help once diagnosed with a severe chronic illness. It's important to note that medical assistance is not always the biggest need. The supportive services that can make or break a treatment regimen or accessibility are often those that fall under the social determinants of health or social needs and are the barriers that PAF most often provides solution to. So as we can see in 2020, 24% of patients served by our case management team received assistance with food, transportation, utilities, and housing. Next. So we know that resources can take on many different faces. So those tied directly to social needs, as well as those tied to, to the financial aspects of medical care. We do know that solutions can be financially tangible, so cash in hand to solve an immediate need, but often the work that our case managers do is intangible, and this can include relief through abatement of medical debt or charity care. And we've all experienced, and there's data to back this up, that the financial burden of health care is um, really increasing. Um, it, it is increasing just in the experience of um, unexpected medical bills, um, unpaid debt associated with medical expenses, um, and, and the really real choices that uh, patients are having to make about skipping medical treatment due to cost or foregoing other um, vital uh, living expenses, rents, utilities, food in order to pay medical treatment. Uh, this is not just um, about a large um, medical bill. Often these healthcare costs are also um, about coinsurances, high deductibles, um, even just the out-of-pocket cost monthly um, to, for your premium. And really exacerbating some of this, and, and I think kind of creating this vicious cycle is um, that patients and caregivers are often not as educated as they could be um, about insurance offerings. Um, they may not know what a high deductible means. They may not have enough in savings to cover that. Um, they may not understand coinsurance. And often um, 
patients and caregivers are having to make uh, decisions about how to spend their funds. And so they often opt for um, an insurance product and they may be a little underinsured because they need to keep that monthly premium down so they can pay for their other expenses. So there is a there is a lot going on um, with the financial burden of healthcare, and and we just see it rising um, year after year that the the patients and caregivers are are burdening more more of the costs. What we do know from the data is that um, needs navigation works, and it, it works in a lot of different ways. So, um, you know, patients can navigate some things on their own, but having somebody there to help them, to assist them, to support them, um, really generates a reduction in general distress. It allows patients to um, let somebody else support them in some of these other needs, and they can focus more on getting well. Um, and they, um, the navigators often find resources that patients just are um, don't know how to find or don't know how to access. We also know that patients that come through our doors um, improve their confidence and communication. So just by having somebody that they're working with, um, they're learning by seeing their navigator um, advocate on their behalf. Um, they're being educated on insurance, the healthcare system, um, and they are watching somebody navigate and, and learning as they go. So patients that go through social needs navigation with us really build confidence and self-awareness in speaking with their providers about non-medical needs, their care goals, their treatment expectations, um, as well as navigating the, the more complex system of, of resources and insurance. So Rebecca alluded to this in, in an earlier slide, and, and, and we know that patients before diagnosis are probably not initially thinking about how their care coverage can, can, can impact their overall financial health and treatment decision once diagnosed. But again, as the preceding slide shows, knowledge is power. And so this intervention with a case manager gives them, the patient, the ability to start to take control of this life-changing event that you know, otherwise leaves them feeling like they're not in control. So we know that educational resources and knowledge truly never expires and it empowers patients to approach their healthcare decisions. And, and this helps to level this playing field. So you can see the patients who experience navigation have incredible increases in understanding their health care plan, understanding the costs associated with the treatment decisions or choices that they've made or are going to make. And it also helps to connect them locally to resources that may be available in their immediate community. Okay, third time's the charm. So with all of that in mind, what role can understanding the patient experience of social need play in improving outcomes? And again, this is a select all that applies. And are we going to get a poll? Rebecca, do you see? Oh, third time's the charm. So please, everyone, you should be able to have the option to vote. And again, select all that apply. All right, I'm closing it up. It looks like they all came in. And you should see the results. And what I love about having such an engaged and um, smart audience is that y'all y'all got this one right. Um, really, all of these um, are important. Um, and understanding the patient experience really has helped, uh, if you will, from the bottom up and the top down. So uh, really having patient input and documenting the needs, the gaps in resources um, has helped improve resources and getting patients the care they need. Um, it really helps us understand um, the struggles and um, how patients are experiencing navigation of healthcare and affordability of healthcare. Um, to make both the policies and the direct services to help patients better. It's also really um, starting to seep into research. There's been more um, focus on including patient experiences and, and the, the struggles, the challenges, the barriers, and 
And I, I think the triumphs of patients into research to make sure that it, research and uh, projects that are generating evidence really focus on what matters most to the patient and is most relevant to patients' lives. Um, and again, this is just uh, stepping us and moving us towards a more equitable health system. So Rebecca, I, I love this slide because I, I really think it also illustrates how the po power of the case of one, that N of one, can be aggregated and translated to give a very unique and diverse population a voice that can then be used on a systemic level. Absolutely agree. And in that spirit, um, I'm going to formally invite everybody to join our COVID learning community. So what we're trying to do is take that, that single voice, that, that N of one, and bring together patients, caregivers, clinicians, and researchers um, to really focus on the COVID-19 pandemic, not just those that have been diagnosed, but the impact that this pandemic has had on everybody, um, their health care, their outcomes, um, and, and just life in general. I'm going to drop in the chat um, a link if you want to sign up to be part of this community. Uh, we're going to have a few educational opportunities um, to do some online learning. We're also going to hold a few workshops um, where all of these groups are going to come together um, and set some priorities and hopefully um, push uh, COVID-19 research in the direction that um, patients, caregivers, and um, providers want to see it go. So if you have any questions, again, I'm, I'm, as soon as I'm off camera, I'm going to drop a link into the chat for the COVID-19 learning community. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, Kate and I are always more than happy to um, engage with, um, with the community, with researchers, policymakers, all of y'all. Um, so drop us an email, uh, give us a call, and we would, we would love to chat more.